Hello, I'm Amanda, Director of Product at Facebook Gaming. Thanks for joining us today. I'm really looking forward to sharing some of what our team has been working on. As Gio mentioned, we have been busy building features that empower developers to create vibrant communities and interactive experiences around their game. One scenario we are really excited to enable is making it possible for collaboration between streamers and developers to showcase their game. So let's show you what we've been up to. Meet Ken, our gamer who's browsing Facebook gaming. He sees a world builder challenge from a streamer for this game, Worlds Forever. In the live chat, our streamer invites his fans to join his world by flashing an invite on screen. Ken enters the game and is able to listen to a streamer while they're in it together. While Ken's exploring, he can switch between listening and watching his live stream to get some sweet play-by-play -play details, all without leaving his game session. Ken can do all this and discover in-game communities without having to leave his game. From our in-game menu, he can find streamers and browse who's playing this game live to connect with fellow fans and following the game page to see the latest updates. He exits the game and navigates to the game hub. He can see a rich player community here. There's live streams happening and posts from fellow players. He can see that his fave streamer won from that world he just played. Ken checks out other sections like groups where he sees a feed for what players are posting around this game. The video we just shared was of a very popular sandbox adventure game, Worlds FRVR. And we are lucky enough to have the founder of FRVR here today with us, Chris Benjaminson. The FRVR team has been one of the developers working very closely with our product team at Facebook Gaming to make the Playwatch Connect vision become a reality. Hey Chris, super excited to deep dive on the work our teams did together. Um, but first we do, before we jump in, I would love for you to tell us a little bit about FRVR. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think to talk about FRVR, it's in, important to first sort of try to set the stage. So today our industry is dominated by a few large stores with sort of almost monopolistic like control over how games are distributed. And not only uh, has this resulted in a market where the only reliable way to become successful is through paid use acquisition, it has also significantly limited uh, innovation around what games are and how they are played. And, and so the best example of that is imagine we're sitting in a conversation virtually as we are right now, and we decided we want to play a game together. Um, the natural thing to do would just to take out the game and put the table in front of us like we would do in the real world. But what happens today is that we would both have to individually go to an app store download and install the game and then hope our devices are even able or allowed to play together. And only then will we be able to actually go and find each other inside of the game. So, so in other words, today, like the action of, of playing a game together is wholly disconnected from the way we have chosen to connect online, right? And what FRVR is, is a platform that solves these problems by allowing any game developer that we work with to create games that can be played instantly anywhere with a single click. And on channels that support it, such as an instant games, our platform automatically allows the games to be deeply integrated, making them feel like their native experience on the platform where they are uh, integrating using your, your, in your case, your APIs and uh, the other platform you build. Very cool. And I am a huge fan. Uh, I love the fact that the natural integration also just makes a great user experience as well. And mm -hmm. We've talked about, you know, my children have the same problem where they try to set up things and it's like, who has what installed and it's painful. So I'm with you. So you are one of the original developers that started making games on our platform years ago. Tell us a little bit about how your games have evolved and what attracted you to Facebook in the first place. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I think and I'm a bit proud about the fact that uh, we were one of the very first companies to ever release a game on, on, on Facebook Instant, right? And back then, the platform didn't really have anything. It had, didn't have monetization yet. And 
uh, we sort of took a big risk. But what the reason we decided to do that is that there was a fantastic vision. Talking to the Facebook team, what you guys wanted to do sounded amazing, right? And that was a, a great team. And of course, Facebook has a huge user base. So even though uh, FRVR was only two people back then, and I think we had two, four games and, and sort of half a platform, we decided we were going to do this sort of investment into Facebook, right? And sort of sort of uh, bet, bet on the horse. And uh, uh, it only took like 24 hours to get the first game Hex Forever live on the platform and, and sort of seeing that going live Right. That was like a rocket ship. I think overnight we we like 10 x our daily active users to the hundreds of thousands, right? And and we got very busy very quickly trying to uh, to hire and raise venture funding, right? Our, our first uh, our first seed round, and like that was like four or five years ago. And we've been incredibly fortunate to be able to work with Facebook since then, and and sort of participate as Facebook has evolved from this the simple product into the fully featured and very valuable platform it is today. And today that success, both on Facebook and similar platform has allowed us to grow uh, the company to almost 80 people. And that bear in mind that that's with us only really having started our A round funding race uh, earlier this month. That's a lot of hiring. <laughs> been busy, gotcha. been busy. So we've talked about this concept of removing barriers, and I really, really, really love that because it resonates so well with our Play Watch Connect vision that Gio mentioned earlier. So what does that mean for FRVR and your, your game strategy going forward? Yeah, so, so, so Play Watch Connect is a good example of where, where sort of the vision of FRVR and the vision of Facebook is very well aligned, right? But and and like it allows people to play games in a in a social context, and the FRVR platform already supports sort of that basic infrastructure. So where where the new Play Watch Connect has a significant impact on our roadmaps is around streaming, right? And and streaming is of course a big part of what today makes games great, right? Um, and like making it easier for players to play with their favorite streamer is a natural extension of trying to sort of remove the barriers of allowing people to have fun, right? But that has a significant impact on us. Like, like for that to work, players must, must actually be able to play with a stream alive. And the game that they're playing must actually be worth streaming, right? So, so over the last year, we, we made sort of real-time multiplayer something uh, our platform supports natively. And it also means we are, we are now sort of heavily investing into uh, multiplayer and social uh, games such as World's FRVR. That's awesome. And I think it's, I love that idea. You know, double clicking on that scenario of a streamer and a player playing together. In the video we show Disguised Toast, he's playing FRVR Worlds. You see the player jump into the game. Um, you talked a little bit about your implementation. I'd love to know what it was like working with us to implement that feature. Yeah, so so on Playwatch Connect, uh, again, we were very fortunate to be allowed to be uh, part of the flow very early on, right? And, and have influence on the API and the, and the features that should be included. And that allowed us to go and, and build the infrastructure and support in our platform while Facebook was actually building the, the, the actual APIs and features, right? And what we like, like sort of think vision-wise, what we really want to do with streaming is to remove absolutely any barrier between watching and playing, right? And if we want to be specific about that, so anyone watching a streamer playing World's FRVR, we want them to be able to click a link and be in the world with the streamer, right? But also reverse, right? So you can imagine you're playing World's FRVR and you see a streamer inside of the game. We want, we want to make it as easy to then go and watch that stream of that streamer, right? So, so it's, it's a bi-directional relationship where the barriers between watching and playing has been completely removed. So I have to say, when we ran those tests, we got the best feedback from the streamers on, on doing that play with their fans through World of RBR. We had streamers talk about how like they would literally request Hey, can you stream Worlds of RBR again? Because I totally want to play with you. And that was amazing. They love the interaction. And about the barriers, they love that it was so easy. To your point, you weren't talking about 
what to download or what device you were on or waiting in a lobby. They just got in. And so when we talk, like, I know you and I are like all in. We love, we think Playwatch Connect is the future. We want to break down the barriers. But what does that mean for you when we talk about a gaming universe without barriers? Yeah, like, like, like I was, I was sort of smiling while you earlier today presented Facebook's vision for what, uh, like, the experiences in the metaverse will be like, right? Because if you look at a product like Worlds Forever, it's already a place where you can see your friends and collaborate and learn and shop and create, right? And all with your friends. And I, I guess our, our our goal with a game like Worlds Forever is to making the action of joining and creating a great immersive social experience as easy as clicking that link, right? You know, we want we want people to get into those experiences with absolutely zero barriers. And with Playwatch Connect, we can actually go and do that on the Facebook Instant platform. Yes. So we've talked about the connection between a streamer and a viewer and around that, kind of how it builds around that shared game experience. Let's talk about the player connections around the game. So in the video, we see how a player can access the official game group. Tell us a bit more about why that was so important to your players and to you as a developer. Like engage players once more, right? So, so people who are enjoying Worlds FRVR really wants to engage and connect with other players who also really like the game, right? And if a player is playing on uh, the Facebook platform, it's only natural that they want to use the existing Facebook community features such as pages and groups to do so. Um, and what this new uh, Playwatch Connect API allows us to do is, it, is to make it very easy for a user to join our Worlds FRVR community. Um, and as we saw in the video, uh, like it's just a simple click of a button, right? And we added a, a, a button inside of the game as well that completely removed all the barriers that a user would normally have to go through to find the world's FRVR games group. And just the first month after doing that, we grew the amount of people in our community with more than 700%, right? You know, some massive engagement. That was like people wanted to be part of the world's FRVR group. They just didn't know how to. And now they do. Yeah, it's a really cool group. I've uh, joined and dig around. People share tons of stuff. It's amazing. I love it. So we also shot how it was super easy for players to find the most popular streamers of Worlds FRVR. And I know you are especially excited about that feature, which I find super fascinating because you don't usually see developers as excited about like the streaming world. So can you share why you were so excited for this particular feature? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, like fundamentally, us as 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 developers and publishers of games, one of the hardest things that we can do is to convince a streamer that they should go stream our games. Right? They have thousands of fantastic games that they could stream. So why should they stream ours? And the feature that binds together popular streamers and makes them available to players who are currently playing a game gives people a reason to stream our game, right? So uh, we already have a huge engaged community base with Worlds FRVR. And by showing who is streaming the game inside of the game, this now becomes a viable way for a streamer to grow their audience, right? And that quickly becomes a positive feedback loop where more people want to stream the game because they get viewers from streaming the game and more people play the game because they are watching streamers play the game, right? So this is a way to get millions of people to organically interact with our games, uh, which is something that is historically very hard to do, which is where the excitement is coming from. Yeah, in a, an incredibly unique way, which is why it is such a great user experience for, for the players as well. So we've talked about playing with streamers, finding streamers, the game community integration. I want to talk about the game page because everybody's like, it doesn't sound as exciting as these other things, but it can be. So why don't you talk to me about the content that you post to the game page and how Worlds FRVR is using that and any results you've seen? Yeah, so why the, why the game page is different from the group is that it's not a conversation between players. It's a conversation from Worlds FRVR to the players, right? So this is why we post news or if we have a contest or if there's there's some meaningful uh, information that we want to share with the user right and and similar to how engaged players wants to be in groups without engaged, uh, engaged players people actually also really wants news from the game right 
And and we did a thing where uh, similar, we added a button inside of the game. And then every time we post something new, we put a small red badge on that thing, right? It just to say, that's a new piece of information. You should go and read it. And 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 by taking advantage of such a simple feature, it, like there's not a lot of code there. I think it's like less than 50 lines of code in total to do all of this, right? Um, we increased the amount of new users who join our Facebook page with 60 times, wow. like day over day, right? You know, and it's consistent. Like that is the average now compared to before with approximately the same daily user base, right? So again, huge want to engage with social features and communities and news. And now the ability is actually there for the user to take action on that want. Yeah, and I love how the integration like to your point is kind of without the barrier. So if I'm in the game, I can find the stuff. If I'm in the page or on the group, I can get a deep link to the game. So it's all very organic and kind of just a natural progression, which is fantastic. So before we go, one more question. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the new games that you've been working on? Yeah, so so as we were talking about, like most of the games we are now uh, focused on are multiplayer and social first games, right? And I think if I were to highlight something out of a catalog that I'm particularly excited about, we have a, a, a game called Minigolf FRVR, which is an asynchronous multiplayer and real-time multiplayer social game, which we also recently released on Facebook. When, when that is said, uh, we are actually actively right now looking for highly skilled game studios and developers to, to work with us about building very complex experiences such as worlds forever. So if anybody out there is watching the stream that <laughs> think that that would be exciting to go and do, please please reach out to me. My, my email is chris at frvr.com and I'm super happy to facilitate that conversation. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Chris. It's been awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. That was amazing. I love talking to our partners and getting their unique perspective on where gaming is going. In our Facebook gaming mission to build the world's gaming community, the Play Watch Connect strategy is key. I really like to focus on Connect of Play Watch Connect as it is really important to how we break these barriers and enable really unique and fun gaming experiences. You can see the connection between developers and streamers to build a fan, fan base and excitement around a game. You can also see the connection between the streamer and their viewers when they get to play together. With game page integration, developers can build connections with their players by sharing news and events from the game to the community. And with game group integration, developers can cultivate community among their fan base by allowing players to share game content and even jump into each other's games through a deep link. The real magic is that those connections will actually amplify each other. For instance, fans of the game can join a game together and fans of the streamer can discover a new game to play. Together, this generates a really positive feedback loop of reaching a larger and larger audience of interested players and live stream viewers. Overall, we are working hard on making Facebook the absolute best place to play games with friends and communities and discover new games to play. Thank you all for joining us today for this Developer Day Showcase. We really appreciate your time and are incredibly excited to welcome your games to our platform.